of the things that makes this coconut ice cream a little special, I think, is the palm sugar that I'm going to be using. So palm sugar used a lot in Southeast Asian cooking, particularly in Thailand, where my mum is from. And it will come like this, usually it's kind of in firm little mounds or bricks. And what you need to do is just finely shave it. That'll allow it to dissolve a little easier. And now the reason I love to use palm sugar for this is that you kind of got a little bit of a subtle molasses flavor, not too strong. And so it has just a slightly different kind of flavor characteristic. But if you can't get palm sugar, just go ahead and use a mixture of light brown sugar and white sugar. Now that just needs to go into some water and then you just want to bring that to the boil, let it simmer for like literally a couple of minutes just until that sugar dissolves. Syrup is nice and cool, now I want to whip it together with some cream. So the whole idea with no churn ice cream is you need two things. You need some aeration and that's what this whipped cream uh, situation is going to do. And then a little bit later on I'll show you how we get the velvety smooth situation. So cream first and this is just regular pouring cream or in Australia we call it thickened cream. And now your syrup. And here's one of my other little secret ingredients here, a little pinch of salt. Salt is one of those things that brings out even like the magic in sweet dishes. It kind of makes the sweetness sharper and more intense if you like. Now you want to whisk this until you've got really lovely fluffy firm peaks. So now we've taken care of the light and airy aspect, we have our whipped cream. What we want to do now is take care of the smooth and velvety consistency. So what we do to get that is we use a good old can of sweetened condensed milk. Uh, very simple, it has a very low water content. Water is your enemy here because water, too much water will give you those ice crystals that you don't want in ice cream. So I've had this guy chilling in my fridge for a few hours now and actually that's quite important. You want all of these ingredients to be cold, the cream, the sweetened condensed milk and the coconut cream. So anyway, condensed milk into your bowl and then add in your coconut cream. And you can see with the coconut cream, you kind of get a little bit of that firm coconut fat on the top. That's all good. Uh, it will be like a little bit separated down the bottom, but we're going to whip it all together anyway. Now, this doesn't look the prettiest just yet, but give it a really good whisk until it's nice and smooth and it will look all the more beautiful. Hold on. So you don't want to ruin all the work you put into getting that beautiful aeration in the cream. So we want to combine this gradually. So you want a spoonful of your whipped cream into the coconut mixture. Now just fold that spoonful through and then maybe one more spoonful here. And what we're doing here is we're kind of lightening the mixture up before we start adding in the rest of the whipped cream, which will mean everything just stays more airy and fluffy and lovely. Okay, now we can go in with a lot more. I'm going to go in with half of this mixture. Fold that through. And now the other half. Now you can go your own adventure here guys. You could pop this into a loaf tin and that way you can scoop up lovely soft airy balls of ice cream. Or if you've got a toddler like me and also a big kid husband, you might want to make uh, these coconut ice cream pops. So what I do is I just grab like some of these like little paper espresso cups and just scoop up the mixture into each of those. Now like just check out how fluffy and creamy that looks and smooth. I mean it already just looks like beautiful soft serve ice cream. I mean you know it's going to be good when it looks this good before it's even frozen. Now some paper straws in the middle and then into the freezer overnight. Okay, sit down, I'll get the ice cream. So our little ice cream pops have had their overnight rest and now we're at the fun part, the decorating part. So there are so many different ways you can go your own adventure here. I'm gonna choose two different ones here. I'm going for an adult version and a kiddo version. My adult version is some toasted desiccated coconut. So I'll just get that out. And then I've got here the cutest little things, uh, unicorn confetti. I mean, when I was little, there was just, you know, hundreds and thousands or plain, you know, confetti. Now there's unicorn ones, so cute. <laughs> so here are our little ice cream cups. And to get these out, you just want some water that's just been boiled, you know, quite hot and grab a cup by the stick and dunk it in. A few seconds is all you need. And then just twist and pull. 
and there you go. You could actually just leave these just as they are. I mean, they're so beautiful and flavorful, but let's get in here with some dipping and rolling. Okay, so just roll around in the coconut. And then onto a tray. And one for the kids. Now the great thing about these is you can get them all out onto a tray and then back into the freezer so that they're ready to go whenever you're ready to serve. So I like to get them all done at once. So there you go guys, four ingredient ice cream, no need for a machine and well let's just go in here and make sure that it's really good for you guys shall we? Now I know I said adults version, kiddo version but you know the kiddo version is just so much more fun so I'm going in with that one. Mmm, mmm, excuse the crunchy unicorns. But that ice cream, the ice cream itself is so creamy and it's so smooth and so velvety, not an ice crystal in sight. Mmm, honestly, I could eat so many of these. But I suppose I better go share with my little toddler, Charlie, who is going to go crazy over these. Let's go see. All right, are you ready for ice cream? Okay. Should we sit down and have some together? There you go. Oh, is that yummy? Are we having tea party? Oh yeah, we can have a tea party if you like. Cheers. Cheers. Is yours got unicorns? Yeah, mine's got unicorns. So I bet yours. <laughs> you tried mine, did you? Yeah. All right, let's do the base of the cheesecake first. This one couldn't be any easier. I start off with ginger nut or ginger snap biscuits. I really like this kind of ginger spiced flavor here, but a lot of people use digestive biscuits as well. That is totally fine. And we just want to crush these up. Easiest way I find is a food processor or a blender. And once you've got a fine crumb, just add some melted butter. And just, you just kind of want to mix that through till all the crumbs look a little wet, like wet sand. Mm, already the smell of that ginger and butter, so good. Now get that out into a round cake tin. This is a spring form one, which just means it's got a little buckle on the side here, so it opens up. Easiest way for cheesecakes, I reckon. And you just want some baking paper at the bottom, and in goes the crumb. Now to spread that out a little bit, and then just use a flat glass to press it down. And this is the easiest way really to get right into those edges and to make sure we've got a very even base. Now just pop that into the fridge while we get the filling done. Okay, so I reckon baked cheesecakes is one of those things that even people who don't love dessert still love cheesecake for some reason. I mean, well, that's what I think anyway. Uh, but for my cheesecake, I'm obviously adding a little bit of an Asian twist and we're putting some chai tea style spices in here. And that adds something really special, I think. All right, so the filling, this one is super exciting. I love these flavors. So chai tea flavors plus white chocolate. Mm. So good. Um, let's go with the white chocolate first. I've got a bowl full here and the easiest way to melt white chocolate, just pop it on top of another saucepan filled with some water and just let the steam work its magic there. So while that's happening, just pop your cream cheese into a bowl. And I want some sour cream here as well. And now some caster sugar. Now you want to give all of that a good mix until it's nice and smooth. Okay guys, so this is a classic case of do as I say, not as I do. Uh, 
just some regular electric beaters would be great to use here. I just happen to, in my Asian kitchen, not have those because we don't do a lot of baking. So I'm using a little hand stick blender, but don't feel like you need that. You just need to beat the cream cheese with the sugar and the sour cream. So, you know, just a regular whisk or hand beater is totally fine as well. So this is the texture you're looking for at this point. Nice and smooth, no lumps. Now let's take a look at our white chocolate. This needs a bit of a stir to help it along. So once we have a nice, smooth, luscious looking melted chocolate bowl here, I'm gonna pour that into our mix. And then we also wanna go in with our flavorings and spices here now as well. This is what makes this cheesecake really special. So a little bit of vanilla, and then cardamom. It's this ground cardamom flavor and spice and aroma that really, I think, gives the cheesecake the chai tea characteristic. A little pinch of cinnamon, just a little bit of cinnamon because I want the cardamom to really shine through here. And some nutmeg. Now just mix that through again. Now I can never resist poking my finger in here just to give this a try at this point. Mm. Those spices, yum, and mixed with that cream cheese, mm, so good. All right, let's add the eggs next. And you wanna add these in one at a time and beat really well in between the additions. Now just grab your biscuit base and pour that mixture in. Now what I like to do here is just tap the cake tin a few times just to get rid of some of the air bubbles that might be in the mixture. Now just pop this on a baking tray and then pop that into the oven for an hour or until the middle is just set. You can find the times and temps on my website. So while that cheesecake is having its beauty nap, let's make some little trifle cups. And wow, this one to me so much says Australian summer. Mangoes, coconut, I mean, for me that is Christmas time. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. And it's super easy, all right. Because for me, desserts always have to be easy. Now, we're gonna start off with some mango. I need to make a puree, so I'm just gonna blend this up. If it's not summer where you are and mangoes are not in season, that is totally okay. You can turn this into a berry trifle. So just use raspberries for the puree and then you can add raspberries and blueberries throughout the rest of the trifle. Okay, so that is the kind of smooth texture that you're after. Now I'm gonna get that into a saucepan. Now I like to fortify my mango puree with a little bit of mango juice, which helps the fruit go a little bit further as well when we're dividing it up. And then I want some sugar and some water. So this is gonna form the base layer of our trifle cup. So what I want is to end up with like a firm jelly. So I'm gonna heat this up first of all. Now my little special ingredient here to get just the right jelly texture is agar agar. Sprinkle that in, whisk it through. All right, so agar agar instead of gelatin here is really great. That is such a funny word to say, a couple of words to say, but anyway, um, agar agar is plant-based. So if you have any friends that are vegan or vegetarian that are coming over for Christmas, then it's great to be using that instead of gelatin, which comes from animal bones. Now pour that out into a jug. Now we can pour the very first layer of our beautiful trifles. Now the other advantage of using agar agar here is that it sets incredibly quickly and even sets at room temperature. But I'm going to put it in the fridge just to speed things up. It'll only need half an hour. Mm -hmm. 
Now one last element I promise we're going to make a little kaffir lime sugar syrup to drizzle on our cake in the trifle. So some sugar, some water, just get that bubbling away and then the kaffir lime leaf also called magrut here in Thailand so I just want oh, about four large leaves Now this brings a really beautiful, light, refreshing lime flavour to your entire trifle. But of course if you can't get a hold of this particular lime leaf you could use something like chopped mint or chopped basil just to add a bit of like a refreshing kick. Now I've taken the stems out here and just roll these up. and I want a really fine chop here just so they're like little sprinkles in that sugar syrup. Pop that into your sugar mixture and once that sugar is dissolved you are done. Let's pour that out and we wait to assemble. So after an hour, this is what your cheesecake should look like. A few little cracks around the edges, puffy, and when you just shake that tray, it shouldn't jiggle like it's all wet through the center. It should be quite firm. Now this isn't quite done yet. Shut the oven door and let that cheesecake rest in there for about an hour with the heat off. By that time it'll sink down and then pop it in the fridge. Okay, so I'm not a huge baker, cake maker, dessert maker, it's just not my jam. Uh, so for me, desserts have to one, be easy, and something that I can put together fairly quickly so that I can concentrate on the rest of my entertaining or Christmas spread. So you'll find both of my little Christmas dessert recipes here to be very achievable, even by non-baker dessert people like me. So here we are with our cheesecake and after it rested in the oven I popped it into the fridge to cool down because of course no one wants to be adding whipped cream to a hot cheesecake. That is going to be a recipe for disaster. Um, now let's get our cheesecake out. I'm just going to using a butter knife to just kind of loosen it from the edges here. And this is where you cross your fingers and hope that everything has worked out well. Just release that spring on the side. Oh, beautiful. Look at that lovely dark caramel colour all over that cheesecake. That is just so perfect. Okay, get this out onto the plate that you're going to be serving it on. And then now we come to the fun part, the decorating. Okay, start off with some whipped cream. I just whipped this cream with a little bit of icing sugar to kind of stabilize it and sweeten it a little bit. Now I like to have a little swirl pattern on my whipped cream, but totally up to you how you'd like to go about it. And now let's go in with our berries. I've got some cherries to start off with. And some blueberries. Some strawberries. some red currants for a Christmassy touch. Now I'm going to add a little bit of greenery here with some mint. Now you want to put a few berries around the outside here. and then a little bit of icing sugar dusted on top because it always makes things look a little bit more special. And there you go, 
Thai spiced white chocolate cheesecake with berries. Mm. Doesn't that look amazing? So festive and so easy to do. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it, I promise. All right, so time to put everything together and this is the fun and easy part. All right, so I've got my little mango jellies in here that have set nicely. And then check out our little spread here. What I like to do at Christmas time when you're you know, gonna be cooking a lot is take some shortcuts where you can. So I just have some store-bought cake that I've cut into cubes. I've got some meringues, some wafers. I've got some coconut chips, some little white chocolate balls. And then now it's all about putting it together. Got some whipped cream and I just want to dollop that on top of my jelly. Try to be neat about the size of the glass, but you know, do what you can. We're not a fine dining restaurant here. And then some fresh diced mango on top. And now for my coconut flavor, I've got some toasted coconut chips here, but desiccated dried coconut, any kind of coconut flake is great as well. And I'll just crumble that in. And now some of the cake. And then drizzle over some of that kaffir lime sugar syrup that we made. And I love how those little flecks of green and just like a little sprinkling of confetti in there. So festive. And now these parts are optional, but I like to have lots of different textures in my trifle cups. So I've got some meringue here and I'm just gonna break that into little bits and pieces. Sprinkle that on top. Oh, there's some little chocolate chips in this one. Nice, bonus. And now another little dollop of cream. And then a wafer on top. And now another little optional because when you don't have to make these things, you can go all out with the decorations and the flavors. So I've got some little white chocolate balls here as well. And there you go, my little mango coconut trifle cups. These guys could actually be made the morning you want to serve them and just keep them in the fridge. Maybe take the wafer off, put that on at the last minute so it's nice and crunchy. <sighs> Summer in a cup, so gorgeous. Now for the all important tasting part, of course, to check and make sure I've done a good job for you guys. So let's just have a look at that cheesecake. Mm. That is such an amazingly beautiful and light cheesecake, but that spice flavor through there is so punchy mm. and just makes it a little bit different mm. and incredibly Moorish, my goodness. Mm. I love that combination. And now with your trifle cup, there's only one way to do this. You've got to get a whole cross section of all the bits and pieces in there. So you've got to get your spoon and get right down the bottom some of that jelly, mm, perfect spoonful. All of those textures, you know, this is the thing about a trifle. You get all these little moving parts, you put them all together and it makes something so beautifully harmonious. Yum, and that coconut and mango flavor, mm. it's like pure sunshine. Wow.